I don't know whether you're a stay-at-home mom. I don't know whether you started your own company. I don't know whether you're a pastor or maybe a college student, right? There's a million different things that you guys on the other side of the camera might actually be and do. But here's what I know without a shadow of a doubt is the more effective you lead, the better leader you become, the more successful you will be. Hey guys, welcome to the Troy Grambling Podcast. It is our 55th episode. And you know what makes it special? I mean, the fact that you're here and you're listening, of course, makes it special. But this is February the 22nd. It is my beloved Stephanie's birthday. And we shall be celebrating. You know, February is a big birthday month in our family. We have the we have the kind of the spring summer where all of our kids were born because Steph is a school teacher and you know, we tried to have the kids in the summer so she didn't have to miss work. And uh, they all came a little early. I guess I was just, a, you know, a little too anxious. But um, anyways, it's my mom's birthday on the 1st. It's my wife's birthday on the 22nd. And then guess what? The last day of February. February the 28th is my birthday. In case you would like to send me a gift or a card. <laughs> But anyways, uh, it is a big, big month. And, uh, you know, I'm excited today. I'm just going to share a little bit from my heart. We're going to talk, um, talk a little bit about leadership. I, I you know, especially early uh, in my ministry, leadership is one of those things that I've always been really passionate about. As a pastor, you communicate, right? Most people think of a pastor, they sometimes even call him a preacher. And so they do a lot of communicating, but I want to get somewhere, you know, I want to accomplish something. I want to do something. That, that's why I'm here today. That's why online, you know, we had our contest just a few weeks ago. And it's the reason we're doing Sunday Night Live. And it's the reason that we're doing all this social media stuff is I want to have an impact. I, I want to make a difference and have you know, in a positive way in people's lives. Our, our mission at Potential Church and really my mission too, if you go back, those of you who are young probably won't remember, but before we had our smartphones, we actually had day timers is what they called them. And it was like a notebook and you would, um, you know, keep your calendar. And some people probably still do that today, but in the front of it, you're supposed to kind of write your vision or your purpose for your life. And if you were to go way back and find that little vinyl uh, day timer, it would say, um, talk about partnering with people so that they can succeed, so that they can reach their potential. And uh, that's, you know, I thought I was going to be a basketball coach. And instead, God had a different plan uh, for me. But I still um, relish the opportunity, uh, whether it be on the weekend or especially in an environment like this, to be able to share my heart that hopefully will not just encourage and inspire but give us some things to think about, maybe some insight for us to be able to, to get better at what we do. I don't know what you do. I don't know whether you're a stay-at-home mom. I don't know whether you started your own company. I don't know whether you're a pastor or maybe a college student, right? There's a million different things that you guys on the other side of the camera might actually be and do. But here's what I know without a shadow of a doubt is the more effective you lead, the better leader you become, the more successful you will be. You know, it's one of the great things about being alive for a while is you get to, you get to see things and discover whether they're true or not. You know, there's lots of things people talk about <laughs> and when you, you know, and they sound good, they look good on social media or even up on a, a old fashioned billboard, but are they true? You know, do they really play themselves out? Do they really matter? And one of the things that I know matters is that if you become a more effective leader, if you grow and mature personally, I know your marriage is going to get better. I know you're going to be a better parent. I know you're going to be a better college student, a better boyfriend. You're going to be a better employer or employee. I know that the sky's the limit at what you can become, no matter how many obstacles are in front of you. But I also know <laughs> that it's not easy to continue to move in that direction, right? There's always obstacles and there's challenges and there's things that get into the way. 
the easiest thing in the world to do is to just to give up or, or, or to quit. And, and there's no doubt some of you, however you happen to show up on this podcast, are maybe in that place, maybe given up on a marriage or given up on a dream. Maybe you want to have a YouTube channel or maybe you want to start a, uh, some kind of business and um, or a church, right? I know lots of pastors uh, who began and then they get discouraged and somewhere along the way they give it up or they they quit. I know, you know, even for us as we are trying to figure out an effective way to minister to those who are in the you know, digital world is, it's, it's not easy, you know, and it's not easy even with lots of people supporting you. It's not easy with even the equipment that we have, all of those kind of things, still trying to figure out not only how to do it, but to persevere, persevere until you do it, right? That, that you know, that the biggest difference between those who succeed and those who don't are those who persevere and those who don't. It's not really giftedness. You know, one of the things, I grew up in a little town and in our little town, there were a few wealthy people. And then there were a lot of middle-class people, you know. Uh, uh, poverty looks, I think, different in a small town than it does in an urban area. And, um, but when we moved to South Florida, I got to meet truly wealthy people. And, you know, some of them, I'm like, really? They've got millions of dollars and, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to, you know, buy the, the kids, you know, diapers or whatever. Really? There, there's, there's not this incredible difference. I mean, there's lots of smart people and there may be a big difference between those of us who are normal and the incredibly smart people. But I'm talking about those who are succeeding in the sense that they're impacting the world whether it is what they what they know or whether it's with their resources, you know, or the ideas, those kind of things. I think that, um, you know, when you, I share that with you to say that the difference is they just didn't quit. You know, I think about one of the richest dudes in the world, uh, the, the dude that owns Amazon, right? Uh, Jeff Bezos, you know, and, and his newspaper is failing at the moment. And they're closing down and people are losing their jobs. It's like, well, how's he going to respond to that? And what's he going to do about that? And not only him, but what about all these folks who lost their job? Right? How many of them are going to give up? They dreamed of being newspaper writers. They dreamed and they're going to somewhere, they're going to give up and not proceed to move forward. And then some of them, this is going to be the best thing that ever happened to them. Right. I mean, <laughs> they're going to have a month or two months or maybe six months or however long where there's frustration and there's tears and there's fear and there's anxiety, all the emotion. But they're not going to give up. And as a result, some door is going to open for them and they're going to walk through it. And that's going to be their story. And I, I say all of that just because I want to encourage you not to give up. And because those are the words I have to say to myself all the time, right? Don't, don't give up. When, any, when it takes longer than you thought that it was going to take, when it costs more, when not everybody understands what you're trying to do or what you're trying to accomplish, when you sense that people might even be doubting whether it's going to happen, the easiest thing in the world is to, you know, change course, to go in a different direction or, or do a different thing but you're never going to get there. I'm never going to get there if I give up, right? You, you can, um, there's a lot of things you can't control. Like you can lo lose confidence, right? You can tell yourself, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. But at the end of the day, the progress you're making determines a lot of what you feel about your ability to move forward, especially th the longer it takes or the older that you are, because the older you get, the less time that you have to accomplish the goals that are in front of you. And so giving up, if you give up or if you quit, nobody's going to say anything. Here's what I mean. If you're out there and you don't have a YouTube channel, since we're on YouTube here or Rumble, let's say you don't have either one of those. You, you know what? Nobody knows. Nobody's saying, well, look, this person's failed. This person's not making progress. This person's not doing it right, right? You don't feel any of that tension. But if you're like me and you're trying to have an impact and you want to, to build an audience to pour into, 
and you don't have that audience, well, then you feel that every time. Every time you put something out there or every time you try to communicate, you look and you see the number of people you're reaching and you feel what? You feel, I'm not making, I'm not making progress. And not only am I not making progress, everybody sees that I'm not making progress. Whereas if I quit, nobody would see. Nobody would know. Right. And that wouldn't that wouldn't feel the same way. And so I just want to take a few moments today, you might say, and really just encourage you to not give up on whatever it is that you're thinking about quitting. It'll be the worst decision that you make. It'll be the easiest decision you make. You know what else I've discovered is that once you do, it can easily become a habit. I um, told you that I grew up in a small town and lots of times, even in this little town, you know, 20, 25,000 people, pastors would tend to jump around from one church to the next, to the next. And they'd be there about two or three years. And then they'd go to the next church and right. And I didn't, wasn't expecting to go into ministry. So I'm just kind of watching this and I'm trying to learn. And I noticed that about every two or three years, they went to a new church. And if you talk to them, the reason they did is, well, God called them away because something happened at the church, right? People didn't like them. Something fell apart, whatever it was. Now they went to the church talking about how God brought them there and they were excited and it was going to be great. And it only took about two or three years when something went wrong. And so they continued to spend their whole life looking for the perfect church. Well, they're never going to find it, are they? (laughs) Because there's not one, right? People can do the same thing, but uh, the pastor as a leader, they're, they're just jumping from one thing to the next. And as a result, that's what their life becomes. And it's because they did it the first time. And I, I just know that if you, and statistically, people who get divorced are at a higher rate of divorce in their second marriage and are a higher rate of divorce in their third marriage. Why? Because once we do something, it's just easier to do it again. So just don't do it the first time. Just don't give up. Do not surrender. You know, if you're a believer, one of the great things is that you have all this scripture to inspire you and to encourage you. Philippians 4.13, right? I can do all things through Christ who does what? Who strengthens me. A little bit uh, earlier in uh, verses, what is it, uh, six, you know, where it says, don't worry about anything, pray about everything, tell God what you need, thank him for what he's done, and then he will give you a, a peace, right? There's just all of these different scriptures that remind us you can continue. And here's the good news. Uh, You don't have to dream about the finish line. Just take the next step, right? I I know for me, listen, I I can dream about the impact we're going to have one day and I can cast that vision. But in reality, I just have to make one more video. I, I just have to sit in front of the mic one more time, interview somebody interesting one more time. That's, that's all that it requires for me not to quit. That's not very much, right? You just got to make it one more day with that goofball you said I do too. You just got to get up and go to work just one more time, just one more time. And if you do it one more time, you have not quit until eventually that door of opportunity or a breakthrough um, is going to happen before you. That's the, that's the key. Now we got to grow along the way. We got to mature along the way. You know, David in the Bible had these mighty men is what he called them. And there are some characteristics about these guys that led to them becoming people that David could um, trust. They were um, unique uh, people that helped David to move to move forward. So we, so we want to grow along the way. We want to mature along the way. But so much of that happens just by persevering. I mean, think about it. How many people do you know who have given up on something? Given up on going to the gym, given up on eating healthy, given up on being vegan, give up on a marriage, give up on dating, given up on going to college. I mean, you probably literally know thousands of people who have given up. And if you know somebody who is successful, whether it's a successful marriage 
whether they're having breakthrough as a parent, whatever area of life, I, they didn't give up. They got discouraged. They thought about quitting. They probably shed some tears. They've had some really rough days. I mean, all those things happen just like they've happened in your life. They happened in their life as well. The only difference between you and them is they continued to believe enough. That's all. <laughs> Hear me, enough to move forward. And if you quit, you know what I've seen in my life? You get bitter. People who don't persevere get bitter. Because you're going to see somebody and you're going to know in your heart that the only difference between you and them is they didn't give up and that they didn't quit. I was uh, a youth pastor and I was sitting at, uh, I was at a youth camp and we're on the second floor kind of balcony thing. And I'm the, there's like four pastors, senior pastors, lead pastors. And I'm just, you know, I'm just a youth guy and I'm listening to them talk. And I still remember this. I mean, I've been a pastor now probably for almost 30 years. I just remember their, their bitterness. I remember their unhappiness. And I remember the, the loss of hope that they had. And I thought to myself, I will never be like that. Then I became a pastor. And I realized it's so easy. that can so easily become who we are because life's not fair and bad things are gonna happen. And if we allow those things to keep us from our dream or to keep us from our destiny, we'll get better. And life can become um, drudgery, right? We become judgmental. This weekend I, I talked about being judgmental and we live in a culture that's incredibly judgmental, don't we? Right. I mean, we can just go online and we can type it in or a million different ways. We can honk, you know, just on the road. We have so many ways for me to judge you. And I'm just trying to be more aware of how often I do that so as to elevate myself. It's not I'm trying to help you. It's just I feel bad about myself. Right. I mean, think about it. whatever it is that you're trying to do. You know, for us, we're trying to build an audience here on YouTube. And so it's very easy for me. There's tons of people who have millions of people that they are able to um, pour into, right? Because our goal is not to be an influencer or in a sense of, of power. Our, our goal is to partner. I mean, that's our, our, our mission. But it's easy for me to look at one of those and to judge something about them. Right. Well, they don't this or they don't know that or they blah, blah. Right. All those things. Now, and it's not because I desire to help them because I'm never going to do anything with that. I'm not going to try to help them. I'm just going to criticize them. So I feel better about myself. Right. Pastors do it. Parents do it. Family members do it. Right. And why does that happen? It happens because we get bitter about the success that somebody else has. And one of two things we don't because we've given up. Or we're in the process of God molding us into the people we need to be so that we can experience the success. And then we allow our, our bitterness or our judgmental spirit to actually become the obstacle that keeps us from our destiny. So just, again, I just, you know, just want to encourage you. There's something unique about you. I, I believe that with all my heart. There's something special about you. You are different than me probably in a multiple of ways, but you're different from everybody. You're, you're unique. And it is that uniqueness that God wants to use in a very special way that matters. And that's important. It matters. I believe that what God creates us to do is significant. Right. Not everything I do, do I feel significant? Probably like you. I'm a part of an event and I'm just there. I'm just watching. Right. I'm just cheering on the heat, you know, or I'm just saying amen to Joel, Pastor Joel Osteen. Right. I'm, I'm just I'm just there. I don't feel significant. But you have to remember in life, God didn't create anybody to not be significant. There's a significant role for you to play. And only you can play that role. 
And it's important and it matters and it makes a difference. And, and, and I don't know, you know, whether one day you'll be wealthy or you'll have a million followers or you'll build a big, I don't, I don't know if that significance will play itself out in the sense that the world will recognize your greatness and your significance. But what I do know, and this is the best part for me as a Christ follower, is I do know that God recognizes it. And he tells us in his word, the cool thing for me is he tells us in his word that he will reward it even in, in eternity. So it's a pretty cool deal. I, I get to have a sense of peace in this life, a sense of purpose in this life, a sense of hope in this life, and some kind of eternal reward. I don't know what that looks like, but I know the scripture talks about it. And so as you think about whatever it is that's in front of you, just don't give up. Just one more day, one more book, one more email, one more conversation, whatever it is, it's just one more. That's all you got to do. One more. You know, I know this has been a different uh, kind of podcast today, but I just felt, probably because maybe I needed encouragement. I just felt that there are probably some of us out there that are going through a difficult time. It's been a challenging year and maybe even more so for you but you're not the only one going through it and uh, you're going to get through it. And not only are you going to get through it, you're going to be better. You're going to be wiser. You're going to be stronger. The next time you're going to go through something just like this, but it's not going to feel like this because you're going to be stronger. When I was, uh, I played basketball in college and my first year in college was so different than high school I hated practice. I, I got anxious about practice and all the running and all. I mean, it was just hard. But on my second year, the same practice, some of it was even more difficult, but it didn't affect me in the same way. Why? Because one, I was mentally stronger. I was also, I was older, so I was physically stronger. It just did not affect me in the same way. That's called growth. It wasn't that the coach changed what we did. I changed and I changed because of what I did the year before, because of all those bending over, not being able to breathe, all those line drills, right? Well, the same thing is true with whatever it is you're going through right now. It's not only are you going to get through it, but you're going to get through it in such a way that you're going to be stronger. And the next time you go through this, you're not even going to experience it in the same way. And you're going to continue to mature and grow into becoming who God always had in mind for you to be so that you can do that of significance and purpose. And can you think of anything better? And I guess this is kind of where I want us to end it, but can you think of anything better than to get to the end of your life? Whenever that is, you know, I was, what, a couple of years ago with COVID and uh, I was, uh, you know, finally I got it. I finally went to the doctor and I ended up, you know, and they didn't know you're going to make it. You're not going to make it all that kind of thing. And I, I just remember the peace of reflection as opposed to the, to regret, right? Is there anything greater that when you look back on your life and no, none of us are going to do everything perfect. And we're all going to say, well, I wish, but can you think, imagine if you're ready to look back and say, no, no, man, I, I, while I didn't do everything perfect, I ran the race and I fought the fight. I ran the race and I fought the fight. I did not give up. I did not quit. I did not surrender. I don't think there's anything greater than that. And we can all do it. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. What is it? What's this year been like? What are you dreaming about? How can we encourage one another? Maybe what that, that is what this is all about. You know, there's somebody that you know needs to hear what we just shared. They're going through a difficult time, a discouraging time. Share it with them. Send them a link or send them a picture, right? It, um, my prayer, my hope 
is that it would make a difference. Who knows? Maybe they know how to cure cancer and they, they're thinking about throwing in the towel. Maybe they've got a teenager that is just, oh, they're just driving him crazy. And yet God wants to use that teenager in a big way. I, I don't know, but share it and encourage them. Along the way, we'd love for you to subscribe and like and do all that kind of stuff. Help us reach what God's called us to do. Don't forget, there's a video version if you're listening on audio on YouTube and Rumble. And of course, the audio version on all the different platforms. We love you here at the TroyGrambling.com podcast. But uh, we'll see you next Thursday. And uh, you have a great week. God bless.